What is actually the farthest point in the universe? The Big Bang, the edge of the universe, or is it the light that emanated from the first star? The James Webb Telescope may now have reached the furthest point of the observable universe. This discovery was completely unexpected, and again we marvel at the incredible discoveries and new dimensions that this telescope is showing us. Scientists now have to face the truth, and they are stumped. The recent discoveries with the JWST have once again shaken up the astronomical community. These new findings have the potential to completely revolutionize our understanding of the universe once again. The JWST may have reached the most distant point in the observable universe and shown us structures that are almost impossible. Using the gravitational lensing effect, in which light is bent and amplified by the gravity of massive objects, the JWST has observed five extremely dense protoglobular clusters. These clusters are located in the Cosmic Gems Arc Galaxy, which existed only 460 million years after the Big Bang. This discovery now provides us with an unparalleled view of the earliest phase of star formation in the universe. Even more surprising is the discovery of a galaxy that existed only 290 million years after the Big Bang. This galaxy, named Jade's GS-Z14, is the farthest point in the observable universe and is the oldest galaxy ever observed. This galaxy is exceptionally bright, suggesting that it's several hundred million times the mass of the Sun. The question arises as to how the universe was able to form such large and bright galaxies in such a short time after the Big Bang. Cosmic Gems Arc Galaxy – What's Wrong Here? Einstein's theory of general relativity explains that gravity is the result of the curvature of space-time by matter and energy. This curved space-time determines the paths that energy and matter follow. Light, which normally travels in a straight line, can be deflected and amplified by the gravitational force of massive objects. This phenomenon, known as the gravitational lensing effect, allows astronomers to observe distant objects that would otherwise be too faint or too far away. The JWST has used this phenomenon to observe the Cosmic Gems Arc Galaxy. This galaxy got its unusual name from its optical resemblance to a very fine crescent moon. Without the gravitational lensing effect, its light would have been too faint to be detected with current technologies. The old Hubble Space Telescope had already provided clues about the galaxy. However, Hubble's images were too blurred. The JWST has now used its NIRCAM to investigate this discovery in more detail. The spectrometer, which can measure infrared radiation in particular, showed that the diffuse light really is a separate galaxy that appears very small and low in luminosity. Further analyses will now show how this galaxy was structured and what kind of stars and elements it contained. The upstream galaxy cluster SPT-CL J0615-5746, which is itself around 4 billion years old and contains thousands of galaxies, acted as a gravitational lens. It stretches over several million light years, which makes it clear why this cluster has such an immense size and gravitational force. Gravitational lenses are a stroke of luck for science. Thanks to them, we can also study smaller objects, such as the Cosmic Gems Arc Galaxy. The study of this galaxy now allows astronomers to look back about 97% of total cosmic time, which puts us at about the time limit of the observable universe. But you have to keep in mind that we are talking about the observable universe. That doesn't mean that there isn't more. This is the exciting question at the moment. How big and how old is the universe really? We thought it was 13.8 billion years old, but now we see galaxies that already existed 300 million years after the Big Bang. This cannot be true, and we have to assume that the universe is much older or even infinite. This would mean that we still have a lot to discover. What do the proto-globular clusters in Jade's GS-Z14 reveal? Only around 290 million years after the previously assumed Big Bang, so-called proto-globular clusters formed in the galaxy Jade's GS-Z14. These clusters are considered to be the precursors of today's globular clusters, which consist of hundreds of thousands of stars. 
By observing protoglobular clusters in this early galaxy, scientists hope to gain valuable insights into the conditions and processes of star formation at this epoch. At the moment, every clue counts if we want to find out what really happened at this time and whether these galaxies are really young galaxies. The clusters are highly interesting because they formed from dense gas clouds and began to form stars very quickly. The JWST again used its NIRCAM to observe and analyze these early structures with high precision. In the spectroscopic investigations, the properties of these protoglobular clusters could be determined, and thus we have interesting new insights into the composition and evolution of early star clusters. The study of protoglobular clusters in distant galaxies could not only help us to find out how the first structures in the universe were formed, but they can also provide us with valuable clues as to how matter in general was formed. Once we have deciphered this, we will be a lot closer to the origins and blueprint of the universe. Researchers also hope to use the distribution and dynamics of the protoglobular clusters to find clues about the distribution of dark matter in these early galaxies. Dark matter is thought to have significantly influenced the evolution of galaxies and makes up a large proportion of the matter in the universe. However, we do not yet know exactly whether it really exists and what its exact physical properties are. Last but not least, the protoglobular clusters within the Cosmic Gems Arc Galaxy should provide new insights into the epoch of reionization. During this period, the universe is believed to have been permeated by neutral hydrogen, which eventually ionized and ushered in the cosmic dawn. Did the cosmic dawn not exist? Imagine an infinite universe. There could not possibly have been a dawn. But until now, this idea has been an integral part of our cosmology. Let's go on a journey together to this theoretical cosmic dawn. Scientists see this point in time as a crucial phase in the history of the universe. Around 300 million to 1 billion years after the Big Bang, the transition of the universe from an opaque state to a transparent one took place. The dark universe was still dominated by neutral hydrogen. It was like a foggy soup. Then, with the formation of the first stars, reionization set in and it became light. The universe was clarified by the chemical processes and light was able to spread freely. Researchers call this time the cosmic dawn. The time before this was opaque, and as we could only observe visible light with our telescopes, there was little hope that we would ever be able to see beyond the cosmic dawn into the cosmic night. Researchers imagined the scenario before reincarnation as follows. The Big Bang was the starting gun around 13.8 billion years ago. From second zero to 20 minutes after the Big Bang, Big Bang nucleosynthesis took place. In these first minutes after the Big Bang, the universe was extremely hot and dense. During this phase, the first light elements were formed, consisting mainly of hydrogen and helium, with some traces of lithium and beryllium. This phase ended when the universe had cooled down to such an extent that nuclear fusion within the extremely hot primordial soup ceased. Approximately 370,000 years after the Big Bang, the recombination epoch followed and the universe cooled further, leading to the formation of neutral hydrogen atoms. This epoch marks the point in time when the universe began to thin out a little as the photons were no longer constantly colliding with free electrons. It was precisely this recombination that produced the radiation that we can still measure today as cosmic background radiation. At this time, the universe was still dark. There were no stars and no light. The Dark Ages lasted from around 370,000 to 300 million years after the Big Bang. During this time, the universe was mainly filled with neutral hydrogen and helium. The temperature of the universe continued to fall and the first structures formed under the effect of gravity. The cosmic dawn began when the first stars and galaxies formed. The first stars are often referred to as Population 3 stars. They were extremely massive and short-lived. They produced large amounts of ultraviolet light, which was eventually able to ionize the neutral hydrogen. With the ionization of the intergalactic medium, the radiation of the first stars spread out. Initially, the ionized bubbles formed around the first light sources, 
And over time, these bubbles merged and the universe became more and more transparent. The chemical processes during reionization were complex. The ionizing radiation, which was mainly in the ultraviolet range, had enough energy to knock electrons out of the hydrogen atoms and ionize them. In addition to hydrogen, helium, which is freely available in the universe, was also ionized. But these processes took place at completely different energy levels and did not have the same effect as hydrogen ionization. Was it all just a dream? It all sounds good so far, but we have a problem with this theory. Since the discoveries of the James Webb Telescope, we know of galaxies that are so far away that their light comes from a time less than 300 million years after the Big Bang. One of these galaxies is Jade's GS-Z14, but there are others, such as Macy's Galaxy or Sears 933-16, that are very old. They all have a redshift of Z at about 14, which means that they existed at a time dating back to the Dark Ages or even before. These discoveries turn our previous cosmological models upside down. According to these models, such massive and bright galaxies should not have existed at this early time in the universe. The existence of these galaxies now means two things. Either the processes of star and galaxy formation took place faster and quite differently than previously thought, or the universe is much older. At the moment, scientists have their hands full reconciling the latest discoveries with the old theories. Where could there be errors? How did the old models come about in the first place? How did researchers in the 1920s and later eras come up with these constructs, and were the methods correct? All this makes for an exciting scientific thriller, and nobody knows at the moment how this thriller will end. Will we get a whole new physics? Do we have to reckon with the universe being infinite? Or have our researchers perhaps overlooked some of the forces of nature? What is certain is that this revolution in science will change our view of the world forever. Subscribe to the channel now and be part of every new exciting video.